Changed the name with the release of our EP last summer. Um, and it was kind of, uh, there were a variety of reasons that we did it. We had been playing previously with Fourth Bandmate under that name. Um, and when Fourth Bandmate decided to pursue other things, we sort of wanted kind of a fresh start as a trio. We changed a lot of what we did um, musically, we sort of took a new approach and uh, felt, and we heard from other people and sort of felt internally that that our previous name, Old Springs Pike, kind of a little bit implied sort of old-timey old -timey country, backwoods, you know, washboards and stuff like that. And it's kind of coincidental and, and super handy that the, the same guy that, was, that helped us uh, uh, you know, decide to change our band name from them for that reason was Rhett Miller of the old 97. So yep. he's in a band where he's sort of first hand was like, trust me guys, 20 years of the old thing really gets to you. Yeah. So a little bit of that helped as well. He also was, uh, produced our, our um, EP, so right around that time, a lot of crossroads going on for us, but it was, uh, you know, just about as organically uh, uh, stumbled upon the name Spring Standards um, as, you know, just sort of what we do anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I lost my bike and I lost my car, but my feet can't get me to the nearest bar with you, baby. We are from, she's now, nah, she's the only one from Delaware. I'm she's from, from Delaware, home of Joe Biden. Delaware. <laughs> you will both be murdered. Um, yeah, so, everyone does the Wayne's World. So, yeah. So, we, so, um, we, we were right on that border. Um, uh, James and I lived on the other side of that border, on the Pennsylvania side. Um, and uh, we, James and I were the first to sort of meet. We met in uh, Chester County, Chester County, Pennsylvania. Yep. And we um, we lived across the fields from each other. And like, we're, we're, we're how old? Fourteen. We were like thirteen, 13 fourteen. 14. And uh, you know, he was into music. I was into music. And then we just started playing. And um, and then he was like, Hey, dude, there's this there's this girl at my school. He changed schools halfway through. And we were like hanging out playing music. He's like, There's this girl at my school with a really beautiful voice. Let's get her like you know like come in. And, Sing with us, and I was like, and I was like, dude, I kind of like the band yeah, the way it is. We were so today, Steve. Yeah, like, I was like, no kidding? way. Um, and then so Heather came, and I was like, well, fine. <laughs> um, so then, so then, you know, Heather joined, and then we were, uh, you know, a three-part band, and we played music all through high school, and then we joined another band. It was another three-part band that became a six-part band craziness um, and that, that band school. yeah still in high school and that band was doing the same Long sort of stuff like harmonies stuff. and like some sort of rock songs but mostly like old like um, classic rock style things but like sort of like the covers uh, and, the covers like, and the occasional original and you know yeah. it was all very primitive kind of like campfire sing along like high school jamboree thing you'd expect from like people that are you know trying to find their their non high school band jazz band kind of thing outlet you know get together, play, sing, do whatever, play chords, don't read the little black dots with the, you know, the notes, don't worry about all that stuff. Um, so we were that kind of thing. And, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't nearly as, like, tour, tour ready and stuff that we are now where we're out on the road and stuff. This, it was very just basic, but it gave way to, like, a musical friendship. Like, there was a, uh, we were all, you know, we got along really well as, as just friends, but uh, it, we learned how to, like, communicate a lot of that with music and stuff. So that's uh, today, like, the reason why we can, you know, sing harmony pretty effortlessly and not have to really get into it. Like, a lot of bands would focus and make sure they learn all the parts. We can just sort of jump right into it because we have uh, that friendship that musically is fused at, like, a, you know, I think the album, uh, the, it's uh, it's sort of like, um, it doesn't read like an album. I think the EP we put out was really, uh, um, it doesn't really have many uh, thematic elements. It's not really conceptual. But um, if you were to draw a line from it, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, there's like a bittersweet. There's a bittersweet. There's a juxtaposition to it. The songs are supposed to uh, immediately communicate as, as happy and, 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 uh, and uplifting when, uh, and then secondarily communicate, you know, 
kind of more of what the drive of the lyric is about, which usually is about uh, like a, usually a personal issue or a relationship issue. And so it, I guess that juxtaposition is sort of like what ties the record together. But it really isn't so much of a record as it was kind of like just a launch pad. I mean, each song is sort of autonomous and exists on its own, um, and they're thrown onto an EP to, as sort of like an introduction. And, and this uh, this new uh, uh, full length we're working on right now is, is going to have a lot more elements of. Uh, of, con of connectivity between the individual songs, and it's going to have sort of like a flow to it that'll, that'll really like um, you know make it exist as a piece. The EP didn't have a lot of um, pre-planning in that realm, kind of intentionally. We wanted it to be just sort of like uh, like you know intro to the Spring Standard sort of thing, um, and uh, and also it was right around that crossroads time where we were like, all right, it's time to put out something. Let's get it out there. And, um, you know, um, we, yeah, we didn't really string it together like a record as much as it was just sort of like. A, yeah, if there were to, if we were to say something, it's just to be like as basic as possible and to ride in that place of, of, uh, of you know the music possibly not being suggested what the lyrics actually mean. Each song has a little get someone's number, like, if you call the next day, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's be like, hey, I really enjoyed meeting you last night, it was fun, you know. I guess that's like the, the networking thing, it's like so important, it's just like, it's important, it's, it's important, yeah, on a ton of levels, exactly, like, professionally, you know, you are totally in control, it's easy to feel like you're not in control, but you can take as much control as you want to. And a lot of that comes with exactly what James is saying, building relationships when you're touring, that, you know, can can range from, you know, that person will just be a friend for life, or that person could, you know, end up next year, the next hot thing, and they ask you to be their opening band, or, you know, that person, 15 years down the line, opens a venue, and you get to play there, you know, it's, it's there are there are so many ways that the relationships, you, you can see it as sort of an ever-expanding family, um, and a lot of opportunities will come from that, but also just the endless source of, excitement you know like we have a bunch of cities now where we feel like we have second families and, and it's and it's really a gift because it makes touring it makes touring less of a burden and more of like a, a treat you know you get to go visit you know your family in Atlanta you get to go visit your family in Little Rock Arkansas or LA or like whatever it's it's it becomes endlessly more enjoyable when you see it as an opportunity to just continue growing a family and a community um, and uh, and also just, you know, I would say, never feel like, like, I don't know, it sounds cheesy, but just like, never feel like you have to give your power to someone else. Like, never feel like someone else gets to tell you the way that you want to approach your career. Um, because it's, it is, it is and has to, has to remain true to who you are. Or it means what's nothing. The point? Yeah, what's the point? Um, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, all that stuff, the same stuff, you know, I think that the, the making friends thing is really important, um, because it's really easy, as you said, it sometimes can get hard, and you know, when you know, you're not, you know, you're on the road all the time, it's exhausting, all these things, all these things, but I mean, if, you, if you're able to sort of like make friends and all these things, it's it's so easy, I think, to to, um, to feel like you're in, you, you become inside this bubble, and it's, you can't escape this bubble of like, you see the world in this very specific way when you're on tour. Uh, you know, you do, you get up this morning, you do this, you do this, you grab here, you go here, you unpack, you load up. Uh, really crappy gig, really amazing gig, met amazing people, met really not so good people. Oh, it's all, and it seems like you get into that bubble, and it's those people that you meet along the way that either A, will offer you advice, um, B, will say like, oh, check out how bad this is, and you know, they're like, oh, maybe it's not so bad, or, or, you know, maybe this is so great, or this is great, and it sort of gives you a perspective, um, you know, because when you spend your time just either if you're a solo artist, I can imagine, or in the band, or how it is, I can imagine it's really hard to, to, to sort of stay away from that tunnel bubble mentality. Um, you know, so, so sort of making those friends in other, in other places is, I think is really important, because you can see other people's perspective of how they're doing it, compared to what you're doing, and it's sort of, I think, for me personally, at least, it definitely leaves me grounded um, as much as it's possible. You know.
good things that they said to make us all